welcome and you dear go baby boy hello baby boy Hey friends, it's Tessa and Jericho, and some of you already know this, I worked as a cat sitter and a dog walker for three years before I started my online business. That was basically a mock visit of what to expect when you hire a cat sitter. Of course, the actual visit would be 30 minutes and not 30 seconds, but you get the idea. Some pet sitting companies offer longer visits for a different rate, so you would have to speak with them if that's what you want. But basically, the pet sitter will come in, refresh the food, water, and litter, and that's the work part of the visit it's about five ten minutes and then the rest of the time is spent doing whatever your cat wants some companies like the one that I worked for also administered medication and you'll see that on their services page on their website so we would play with your cat brush your cat sit with your cat really whatever your cat wants to do some cats loved being brushed so one of the clients that I spent time with he got about 25 minutes of brushing he would stand on the table and I would just brush him the whole time and he would walk around and get Get brushes. I call that the spa treatment. <laughs> so really, again, it's just whatever your cat wants to do once the work part is over, it's spend time with your cat. I strongly encourage you to hire a cat sitter anytime you're going to be gone for more than 24 hours, or maybe if you work really, really long hours and your cat gets a little nervous or stressed around dinner time because you're not home yet, you can hire someone to come in just for one visit to feed dinner. Cats are very keen on routines. They get stressed easily with changes. So you wanna make sure that that feeding schedule is the same every day. And then again, if you're away for more than a day, definitely hire a cat sitter. Even if you have an automatic feeder, even even if you have a gravity water jug, even if you have an automatic litter box, cats prefer human interaction to other stimuli, including food and toys. So if you're gone for more than 24 hours, you should still have a cat sitter come in because what if one of those things malfunctions? You want to make sure that someone's coming in at least once a day to make sure that everything's running smoothly. And cats are also very rambunctious. They like to get into things. They're very curious by nature, especially if no one's home, they're going to go in and out of things. Maybe it's something that they're not supposed to be in. So again, having someone come in at least once a day is going to give you peace of mind, let you know that everything's going well at home and your cat is safe. One time I walked into a client's home and the cat came to the door to greet me and she was all tangled and wrapped up in one of the handles of a reusable bag. And I was just there about 10 hours ago for breakfast. So just within that small window, she got tangled and wrapped up. So now imagine if they were relying only on automatic stuff for days. To find a cat sitter near you, just type Google cat sitter near me. Check their website, read reviews, check their services page to make sure it aligns with what you're expecting from a cat sitter. Most companies are happy to provide references so you can speak with their current clients about the services, about the sitters, how they interact with their cats and how happy they are with the overall service. Also make sure the cat sitting business is insured and bonded to protect general liability and care. The typical hiring process of a cat sitter involves you speaking directly to the owner. Most likely you're going to speak on the phone and they're going to get the crucial details from you, like your travel destination, the time and date that you leave, the time and date that you're expected back. And this is super important because we need to know when to expect you at home. That way we know that your cats are taken care of. You'll also need to provide an emergency contact and this person is a guardian for your cat. Please do not overlook this step. I know it's bleak and not something that you wanna talk about, but if something happens to you while you travel and you're no longer able to care for your cats, you need to have someone in place that understands care, knows your cats and knows you and what you want. That way the cat sitter knows what to do with your cats if you can't take care of them anymore. Again, I know it's a bleak thought and a lot of us 
say, oh, that'll never happen, but it's better safe than sorry. Wouldn't you rather your cats go to someone that you know they're going to, someone that you've already prepared for care, someone that you already trust? It's just better safe than sorry. Additionally, the company will ask you for veterinarian information, and they might also ask you to put credit card information on file and authorize the company to use it in case of an emergency. In my experience, some veterinarians won't treat without payment, even if it's an emergency. And especially with confidentiality, you wanna make sure that the pet sitting business is authorized to use your card that's on file with your vet. Just think about it like this. If it's an emergency, this is time sensitive. We need to do what's best for your cat right away. Maybe you might have not so great cell service while you're away. We can't wait on a phone call, try to get in touch with you, try to get your credit card information, try to have them speak that it's just too much time. You need to get your cat into the emergency care as soon as possible when it's an emergency. We'll also collect medical history, any special needs, personality, temperament, behavior. All of these things are going to help prepare us for visiting with your cat. You'll also want to tell the owner of the company if you're expecting any visitors during your trip. This is really important. One of my coworkers walked in at a scheduled visit with the cats and half the client's furniture was gone. She thought she was robbed and she was about to take the cats to her home because she was nervous. She didn't know what happened. But then the client explained that she had a friend coming by to collect some of the furniture. So you see on the client's end, this is normal because it's her friend, she's coming in, she's already established this. But on the cat sitter's end, we walk in, we see that half of your stuff is gone. We think we need to get these cats to a safe place. But if you tell your sitter in advance, then we already expect it. We already know that this is going to happen. Let the owner of the company know about anything that's going to happen during your travel, even if maintenance is just coming in to check the light. Let the owner of the company know so that the sitters are prepared if they walk in and the manager's there. Next, you'll meet the sitters in person. They'll come to your home and they'll meet you and your cats and they'll confirm some details and get some extra information from you. Most companies don't charge a fee for this. And ideally you would have at least two sitters coming to meet you and to meet your cats and to go over care. That way more than one person is familiar with care. You've met both of them. And if one is not available, then the other can come fill in. Our schedules get kind of crazy. So it's always good to have more than one sitter that's familiar with care. So during the meeting, in person, you'll confirm some details that you already discussed, and you'll also show the person around. This is the feeding routine. Here's the location of all of the supplies. Here's where the litter box is. Here's the location of all the supplies. Here's how you discard waste, medication if necessary, where the cat carrier is just in case, landlord or super information, whoever manages the house. You know, if we come in and there's a leak, who's the person that we would call for that? If you have plants that need watering or if there's mail that you have to take in, all of these details you go over with in person when you meet the sitters. That way they can see where everything is. You can also talk about what to do if it's really hot, you know, if you have window fans or an AC, if it's really cold, how does the heat get managed, and keys and locks. Very, very important to have a spare set of keys with you to give to the sitters when they're at the meeting with you. Ideally, you would provide one key for each sitter and then another one just in case. That way, in case an emergency happens with one sitter, maybe something happened with another client and that sitter has to go to the vet for an emergency, now the other sitter will come in and fill in to go to your visit. And since the other sitter has the key already, they can go as soon as possible rather than trying to meet up with the other sitter while that sitter is dealing with an emergency. And you want the keys ready at the meeting with the sitter. That way you can show them how to use the locks, which locks do you use, if there are any tips or tricks. One client, it was like, you can't turn the key all the way. You can only turn it halfway and then you have to pull the door towards you. Otherwise it won't open. So you wanna do this at the meeting with the sitters so that you can show them how it works rather than waiting until the first visit and your cat sitter can't get in because they don't know how to use the locks. It's also important to be prepared and test the keys at the meeting because one time a client gave us the wrong set of keys and then we didn't know until the day we had to visit. So the client's already away, they are already at their destination. Now they have to spend vacation time calling friends and family. Can you go visit the cats? I have to get a new set of keys. 
Then I had to come back later to meet up with the super and get those set of keys. And then we had to return those set of keys because they weren't really theirs. It's a big mess. <laughs> so be prepared before you leave so that nobody has to scramble around because that's going to take away from time with your cats. Most companies use storage lockers, so they're always locked away safely. They're not at somebody's house. But if you do need them back, make sure you speak to the company about their key policy. The company that I worked for charged a fee every time I had to go pick up keys because it's out of the way. You know, it's much easier for us to already have access to the keys and it's better for you. If you have an emergency, you have to leave work early and go straight to wherever you're going. You're not going to have time to meet up with the cats that are to give them keys. If they already have the keys, they can go and your cat is taken care of. I strongly recommend doing two visits a day, one in the a.m., one in the p.m. Again, cats are very keen on routines, especially when it comes to their feeding schedule. So you would have in the morning feeding and at night feeding. And a good cat sitter will time out these visits to about 12 hours apart. That way there's equal amount of time between the visits. Plus your cat's gonna use the bathroom more than once a day, so coming in to scoop in the morning and scoop at night, this is what your cat's going to prefer. And that's going to make your cat more comfortable when you're not at home. The minimum that I'd suggest is once a day. Some of our clients would do every other day because they had automatic this, automatic that, but if you want your cat to bond with a cat sitter, it's much better to do every single day, at least once a day ideally twice a day. Most cat sitting companies use software that holds all of the information and all of the details that you went over. So they'll have everything basically on their phone. If you have to change something or if something different comes up, let the owner of the company know before you travel. That way the sitters can ask questions or ask for clarification if necessary. Letting them know of any changes before you leave is much better than scribbling out a note at the last minute. Quite frankly, people handwriting is difficult to read. Mine is atrocious. And you don't want this sitter to waste time decoding your letter. That's going to take away from time with your cat. If you feel better about leaving printed instructions, I created a cat sitter instructions bundle that includes everything that I asked for. Now for some FAQs. Even if your cat is shy, I strongly suggest hiring a cat sitter to come in while you travel. I've had many clients say to me, you'll never see my cat, but then after a few visits, those cats become my best friend. Your cat will realize that someone's coming in, changing the food, changing the water, cleaning the litter box, and your cat's going to appreciate that. Cats deserve all of those things every single day. Plus, when your sitter leaves, your cat's going to come out and he's going to be able to smell your sitter. So he's gonna sniff around where your cat sitter was walking. He's gonna understand this person's scent. He's going to smell other animals on this person, and that's really going to help your cat get to know them. And the sitter won't even be there. Cats are very keen on smells, and they know their way around based on smells. They know you because of your smell. They also know you because of your voice. One of these shy cats that I visited with, he heard the door open, and then he would hide under the bed. Then I would start talking and say hi to his sister, and I would say, I saw you, I saw you run under the bed, and then he came out because he knew my voice. Every cat that I visited with would stick their head all the way into my shoe. And Jericho did the same when I would come home from visits. Some shy cats may take a few visits and some might take longer. Another shy cat client that I visited took a year for him to come out. He had other siblings in the house, so I would do all of the work, spend time with them. I would say his name, say hi to him. He hid under the bed the whole time, give him some treats. That way he kind of like gets to know me a little bit, has a positive experience with me, and then that's it. And all of a sudden one day I was visiting and I was done with the work, come out into the living room and he's just like, oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> And then he came up onto the couch, sat with me, I was petting him, and he was cuddling with me and playing. So again, it might take a little longer for your shy cat, but the sooner you hire a cat sitter and find someone that you trust, the sooner your cat will get used to them and the sooner your cat will bond with them. So yes, all cats, even if your cat is shy and you think your cat will never come out, will benefit from a cat sitting visit. If you feed raw, I strongly suggest 
portioning out meals in advance before you leave. Have enough meals ready for the duration of your trip, plus a few meals extra just in case your travel plans change. The cat sitter would just put all of the meals in the refrigerator to thaw the day before. So for example, Tuesday when they come in, they'll put Wednesday's meals in the refrigerator. Wednesday when they come in, they'll put Thursday's meals in the refrigerator. It's highly likely if you're feeding raw, your cat licks his plate clean. And of course the cat sitter would clean up the dishes before they leave. Can I get an update? Yes, of course you can get an update from your cat sitter. Just speak with the company on how you'd like to get your updates. You can get a text or an email either after each visit, once a day, every other day, or not at all. It's really up to you. How do I trust a stranger? I definitely encourage you to look around on their website and ask for references. That way you can speak to their current clients, get to know their services, and get to know how they vibe with their cats. And ask a lot of questions when you speak to the owner of the company and ask a lot of questions when you're at the in-person interview with the sitters. And when you're with the sitters in person, use your intuition, use your gut feeling. Are they respectful of your home? How are they acting with your cats? How are they communicating with you? Do they seem knowledgeable about cat care? Are they comfortable with their job? All of these things together are going to give you a good indication of whether or not you can trust them. And it's perfectly fine to interview multiple cat sitting businesses. Just just let them know once you make a decision, hey, I'm not going to need your services anymore for this date. Thanks again for your time. That way they can clear that spot for someone else that might need their services. Yes, you can definitely install cameras. I actually preferred when clients had cameras because that way everything is recorded. They can see how I interact with their animals. They can see how happy their animals are when I come to visit. I liked when clients have cameras. So you can absolutely install cameras. You don't have to be sneaky about it. You can tell them we have a camera here, a camera here, and a camera here for our safety. And if you found the right sitter, they will be perfectly fine with that. Every pet care company has its own key policies and you'll have to speak with the owner about that. And again, check out the cat sitter instructions bundle in the description below. Thanks for watching.